allegations of corruption, bribery, media censorship, a stripgate scandal, and World War III. This isn't a story about a despotic Arab leader, a banana republic in Latin America, and it's definitely not about Wakanda. This piece of news is coming out of the only democracy in the Middle East, Israel, and its prime minister, the people's champion, Benjamin Netanyahu, AKA, man like TP. So last week, Israeli police recommended that Netanyahu be charged with bribery, fraud, and a breach of trust. Whoa, hey, it's little context here. It's actually not the first time that an Israeli prime minister has been done for corruption. Back in 2012, Ahud Omer got sentenced to six years in prison. And of course, the not so innocent until proven guilty war criminal, Ariel Sharon, was not being investigated in 2006 for corruption before he fell into a coma. Can you just explain to me like, what's going on? Hey man, I'm the, I'm the guy, this is Palestine, I was, I was there. Okay, can we just finish the video? We're not in Palestine, bro. Right? So let's start with the corruption and bribery part. The first investigation is called Case 1000. Netanyahu is accused of accepting gifts from wealthy businessmen amounting to nearly $300,000 in exchange for political favors. So in one of the cases, Arnon Milchin, an Israeli billionaire and Hollywood film producer, is accused of sending Netanyahu cigars and champagne. In exchange, Netanyahu lobbied their former U.S. Secretary of State, John Kerry, to get Milchin a 10-year visa. Man like BB. So besides the fact that Netanyahu seems like he wants a new job in the Department of Immigration, his lawyers haven't actually denied that he accepted the gifts, but are saying there were no favors in exchange. Now look, this is a serious allegation, and even more serious is the second investigation, Case 2000. It relates to audio recordings of lengthy meetings between Netanyahu and Arnon Moses, the owner of the Yedioff Ahronov Media Group, which owns Israel's largest newspaper. <laughs> Arnon Moses reportedly offered Netanyahu favorable coverage to help him stay in power, and even suggested that his company would hire journalists of the prime minister's choosing. In exchange, Arnon Moses asked Netanyahu to promote legislation to end the free distribution of a popular rival newspaper, Israel Hayom. Man like Bibi! FYI, Israel Hayom is a newspaper owned by a friend of Netanyahu's, a US-based casino billionaire by the name of Sheldon Adelson. It's actually so bad that the newspaper got itself a nickname, the Bibi Paper. So let's get this straight. Netanyahu wanted to end the monopoly of one media group that was very critical of him, so he helped contribute to the rise of another media group that only praised him, and then used that media group as a bargaining chip to control both. Wow, democracy at its finest. Now, despite all this evidence, thousands protesting in Tel Aviv, not to mention his son being caught on tape outside a strip club admitting to more of his father's corruption, clearly, man is not hot. In response to the allegations, Netanyahu responded on his Facebook by posting, there will be nothing because there is nothing. He also said that the case is like Swiss cheese, full of holes. Well, that's not a very nice thing to say about Swiss cheese. And we all know this case smells more like blue cheese. That is, if you ask anyone who knows anything about the law or about cheese. Netanyahu gained the nickname the magician for his ability to survive scandals throughout the years. But still, media bias, political favors, and magic aside, Netanyahu is in trouble. His former chief of staff and close aide, Ari Harrow, just agreed to become a state witness. His close allies are starting to distance themselves from him, and the world is watching. But here's the catch-22 about all of this. Netanyahu may have another trick up his sleeve. Because what is Netanyahu good at doing? What does he do all the time? Anyone? Making hummus. No, not making hummus. Anybody else? Knitting. No, not knitting. Come on, guys. This isn't astrophysics. Don't you read the news? War. War. W-A-R. War. That's what he does all the time. He makes war. As a leader, he's bombed Gaza, intensified the occupation of Palestine, and pushed for more illegal settlements. And you know, the list goes on and on and on and on. So now, how very conveniently, Netanyahu hasn't only intensified the occupation against Palestinians, but he's also started beef with Iran. Remember a few years ago when Netanyahu came with a photo of a ticking bomb trying to persuade us that Iran has a nuclear weapon and they're gonna blow us all to smithereens? While he himself has a whole nuclear arsenal that nobody knows anything about? Well now, he's taken it to a whole new level. So last week, Israel shot down an Iranian drone hovering over the occupied Golan Heights. Then Bibi ordered airstrikes against the Iranian-backed Syrian regime. 
He lost an F-16 in the process, and for a moment there, people thought it was World War III. And then, to make matters even worse, this week, Netanyahu did this at a security conference in Germany. Well, here's a piece of that Iranian drone, or what's left of it after we shot it down. Mr. Zarif, do you recognize this? You should. It's yours. You can take back with you a message to the tyrants of Tehran. Now look, I'm not trying to say that Israel doesn't have any security concerns, but what I am trying to say is that all of this is a useful distraction from the hate Bibi's getting at home. Now Bibi isn't the only one playing the game. Iran itself has a lot of economic problems and mass protests while its leaders are focusing more on foreign adventurism. And of course, there was that moment when a certain Bill Clinton had a certain Monica Lewinsky scandal that he always said he was innocent of. I deeply regret that. Until he suddenly started bombing Iraq in the December of 1998. The trick didn't work, he got indicted, and the rest is history. Man like Clinton. So will BB start a war to escape facing the music at home? And if the warmongering doesn't work out, will justice actually be served? If you've made it to the end of the video, congratulations! And if you've taken an interest in Man Like Bibi, please like, share and comment below. But hey, no keyboard warriors and trolls, huh?